So just to reiterate before we start on the uh, controllers from the previous videos, if you're watching them, I'm a lefty, so uh, I'm going to call this primary and top and bottom button primary and secondary controller top and bottom button just to um so there's no confusion with uh, different people with different hands and the letters on the buttons will just say top and bottom or point to the icons so secondary controller the icon there with the hammer and the pencil um the bottom button hold that down brings up your menu and um, by default it's going to be collapsed like this so you can pull down on the primary thumbstick to expand the, that's the full expansion of the menu uh, there's different uh, variations of this by going left right and up and down on your primary thumbstick so obviously we're focusing on the actions menu in a part of the menu in this video so i'll start up in the top corner here this is the grid snapping so i'll turn on the grid snapping and the grid as i mentioned in a previous video is a uh, dynamic so you know when you get further out or closer your subdivisions are going to dynamically adjust um, based on how close you are so i'll just make that a bit bigger they're going to be larger when you're further out and then you can get more fine control the closer you get so that's that's it really um this is you know the early implementation of the grid i'm sure as development goes on and um, there's going to be more added to it i know that uh joshua was working on it so um that's pretty much it for the moment so i'll just disable that Next up is angle snapping. So at the moment we have 45 and 90. Um, and there will be more, I'm sure, added to it. Or maybe not because we have the gizmo. Um, switch over to the gizmo. And as I showed in the previous videos, I'll just turn off that angle snapping. And we have this, uh, these two different um, increments of degrees. For finer control so at the moment the global angle snaps as i say 90 45 90. so that's angle snapping not much more to say about that your layer button here this is to create a new layer so that's going to be very important and used all the time and when you create a layer and um, you'll get this here it's like almost like your pivot point here the center of your layer and that's where you're going to place it so i was going to do another video on, on symmetry and mirroring and explain more about placing layers with symmetry on and off but for the moment um i won't get into all that um so place your layer and that's pretty much it, it then at the moment you know we're, we scope out but we only have a single layer so you can also create layers in the scene at the scene scope here and now they're denoted by as I showed in the very first video, the clay one in the preferences, um, these are your, your inactive layers, so that's dimmed out. Same in ZBrush, the way your your sub tool that you're that is inactive uh, is going to be dimmed out, and then your active layer here is highlighted. So you know, obviously, which layer you're working on. So that's pretty much it. Simple new layer. Uh, some of these here, you notice they're grayed out, um, and that's because um, you access them from the scene scope with something selected so i have this selected now these become available and um, obviously you know on group is dimmed out because we don't have this is selected and it isn't in a group so if i was to duplicate that select these two and make a group out of them you see it's both are dimmed out because you have to make a selection here so now we can ungroup them and back in to our layer and they're dimmed out again and the same with uh with these because you have to do them from the scene scope that's like your scene assembly or your scene management level and i'll probably do a video there's a couple of videos out there i think um on scoping already um the official one and then there's another one by uh, one of the girls off the um the bay there uh, debbie did a video on it as well that you could check out if you go over to the discord um so Duplicate is pretty much the same as what I did. So now that duplicate, you can see the Z fighting here, so it can move them out. And that's pretty much the same as just um, secondary controller, trigger held down, and primary controller, and then you can just keep dragging out duplicates. So I'll just go back to the single layer. 
I'm just undoing there with the thumb stick going to the left. So that's layer duplicate. This one here, flip. I'll just I'll move this out and I'll select it and flip. And it's just basically flipping across the X axis. So what I can do is uh, I can duplicate that while it's selected and then flip and it's going to flip across our mirror axis here. And then delete, obviously deleting, but you can see that's here. You'll be mostly using that. You probably won't um, use it from here because it's always available here and you don't, it doesn't have to be selected. You have, you can just hover over it and then delete it like that. So I'll just undo that. So basically these ones here that you see, you see here I'm on the select tool and because I'm pulling down, I'm not hearing any noise. So eventually there'll be um, a hierarchy to show where you are. So at scene scope, group scope, or in your assemblies or, or into the deepest, which is right into the layer. But I won't get into all that now. I'm just obviously covering these buttons here. So uh, that's group, ungroup. Uh, link is an interesting one. It's pretty much, if you're used to 3D programs, it's uh, it's instance. So I'm going to duplicate this, go into this layer here, and I'll just put some clay down. And these, are, um, these aren't linked. This is just a copy. So... What I can do is back out to the scope, select it, make a link, and then when I duplicate this and go into that layer, you can see here it's it's instance and really, as I say, if you're used to uh, other 3D programs, and if I select that, you can see now unlink is available because I've already uh, linked that or turned it into an instance. So it's unlinked, scope in, and we've broken that link there. We've made that unique, so it's no longer an instance of that one. So um yeah that's them pretty much. it's pretty straightforward um if you're especially if you're used to um other 3D programs so merge same again scope out and duplicate that select these two and these two now are merged you can see it has to um, run an operation here it'll just let you know and this pop up so I'll scope out move that in and select these two again and merge and now you can see I scope back in and smooth it's just like a union a boolean union resolution is next you can see when i hover over that you can see this grid showing up so i'm going to either to increase or decrease the resolution if i'm scoped out i need to select as i said for a lot of these they're grayed out and to select, sorry, I'm just using, see the, 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 the uh, rectangular lasso icon there on the top primary button. That's the select. And you can also, you can also just hold it down and just drag and anything you touch then be selected. But you can't deselect like that. You have to do it individually or else drag across. So once you let go of the button, so we can select one, deselect it. Select, hold the button, and then just paint select. And then to to paint select, or sorry, to paint deselect, just release the button, hop, grab it again, and then just paint deselect. So yeah, as I say, select it, and then things become available. Resolution becomes available at the scene level. So just remember that if you're wondering why some of these are grayed out at the scene level, you want to just make sure that something is selected so it knows just like a 3d program really um because you know in, in a, a proper working scene you're not just going to have a box here in space you're going to have you know you could potentially have hundreds of layers so the resolution here the grid that's the voxel grid a, rep a visual representation of the voxel grid and the smaller these squares are the higher the resolution so if i decrease that you can see the squares are getting bigger because the resolution is getting lowered and then the same i think yeah the pre preview maybe it's not working in the build i have but usually there'll, there'll be a preview here just to let you know um what level you're going up or down so same increase that resolution goes up and that's something you're going to get used to same thing again if you use the 3d packages just think of it like uh you know you're going up 
um, your resolution or your dynamish. Um, but in terms, I never used any voxel um, programs before using this, so I kind of had to just get used to the idea that there's a giant invisible um, voxel grid here and whatever space this occupies, and the bigger the space it occupies, the more uh, voxels obviously it takes to, to, to render it. But um, that's pretty much the basics of resolution. This sample here, this is just a placeholder at the moment, but it'll be uh, similar to ZBrush's recently introduced feature where you can sample resolution from Dynamesh from within the, from a tool and, and then just apply it like copy and paste, I suppose. Um, and resolution, when I scope into the at layer, this will always be available here because you're within that layer, so it knows that's what you're working on. And the same thing here, up, down. And if you have more um, in the scene, you'll get a, a preview. The shader will be on everything else in the scene as well. So that's all them covered so far. And then we're down to this. Uh, these are three. This is three tabs here. So the first one is symmetry, which I'd like to do a separate video on. So I'm going to scope in there. You can see symmetry is, um, symmetry is grayed out here. So I'm going to have to scope into the layer. Um, but you can also see when I hover over it, our symmetry plane. And the symmetry plane, X is the primary plane. And, and the only uh, symmetry you have available at the moment in the... Uh, in modeler so you can always see that a preview of where your x is if you just hold down the menu it'll, it'll pop up here so this will be sort of our front view so symmetry i'm going to scope in and then turn on symmetry and you can see it then just like any other 3d package becomes immediately available and as i said symmetry definitely I'll do a video of that just about symmetry and mirroring because it's a, a a great system they've designed in modeler to deal with uh symmetry mirroring instancing and all and radial uh, symmetry and radial instancing as well which is uh, they're, they're great features in, in modeler so that's pretty straightforward symmetry and this is our radial symmetry here and you can see now even though i have four here there's eight because this i have symmetry on as well as radial symmetry so I'll we'll turn off symmetry, and now it's just like, uh, just like ZBrush's radial symmetry. And I'll probably just include that in the symmetry video, and there, just the number. So that's pretty straightforward. And repetition down here, again, you have to be at the scene scope and mirror lock. Um, at the moment, you know, I can move that off the, off the mirror. I select that and turn on mirror lock. I'm locked in. I'm dragging here to the left and the right, but I'm locked, which is a very handy feature as well. And the same with the, if I have repetition on and radial lock, you can see the radial lock is in the center of the scene here at zero, zero, and I can only go vertically along that radial lock. I can't even pull these out, so turn off radial lock and now we can drag these out and that this is actually where your um, radial symmetry is going to be created so if you want to if you want to drag that off the the radial symmetry turn off mirror lock and you still you see I, I still can't drag that away from there so you just have to select it and turn that into a group and then you can you can move it off there select that again yeah, so that's mirror lock and radial lock. And I suppose I'll probably include them in, in the video about symmetry as well. So that's pretty much that. And yeah, so remember, into that layer. Now I'm gone into the group. And then in again, and now I'm into the layer. I'm going to turn off the radial symmetry. And you see mirror lock. Even though it looks like you can use them here, you, you have to use them at the, uh, the scene level because it's not activating here when I press the button. So that's that tab. The next tab is the um, visibility tab. There's going to be more added to this, an isolate feature, I think, as well. But um, I'll just scope all the way out. And just make a few copies of that. And then you can just <coughs> hide. So that's showing hide 
pretty straightforward and the next one is uh, boolean so same again back out the scene to use boolean and we'll just give that a couple of duplicates and select deselect all select that one and i'll turn this into a subtract which is red intersection for pink and merge is green so these are just if you again if you're used to a 3d program and um, they're just straight up booleans so we'll just apply that and i probably should have demo shouldn't have demoed this because uh, in this current build there's a bug with the booleans but uh not to worry the more it's more just these buttons are still going to be here whatever build you're using it's more just to demonstrate you know what what the icons are in the actions menu so that's pretty much it that covers uh all you need to know about the actions menu and just um remember if anything's uh, grayed out here just go out to scene and select so the other things um i think i, I didn't show i'm just going to delete those select this and back here and that is um repetition so i've got mirror repetition and radial repetition so that's a radial and it's pretty much the same as the radial symmetry when you're working on a layer and then i'm just going to do the same again here i'm going to group these move them over here select them again and mirror and they show up here in this kind of hashed um blue ha hashed or hatched whatever whichever you prefer and same again turn on mirror lock and we're locked here to the mirror turn on radial lock and we're locked here to the vertical of the radial so that's pretty much it for um the actions menu uh, pretty straightforward but you know some people some people prefer you know sort of a video walkthrough rather than reading about the stuff a picture a thousand words and all that sort of stuff all right hope, hope this was helpful all right then. cheers thanks good luck